Hi, this is Barry here, and you're very welcome to today's podcast episode on rightcome.com. And today's podcast episode is entitled A Business Tip from Jonathan's Magic Jumpers. Now, the Jonathan I am referring to was a chap that I grew up with uh, and went to primary school with. Now, Jonathan was a nice chap and he was particularly good at Gaelic football. He was one of those people that once he got the ball in his hands, it was very, very hard to get it off him. But there was something else special about Jonathan and that was his jumpers. You know, not only were they knitted by his mum, but he never seemed to grow out of them. Now, when I was growing up in the 1970s and the 1980s, there wasn't a lot of work in Ireland. There was a lot of unemployment. There wasn't a lot of money going around. And, you know, it being a a big Catholic uh, country, the family sizes were particularly large. So it wasn't unusual to find, you know, maybe four, five, six, seven, you know, even a neighbour of ours had 10 children in it. So, you know, big families were the kind of the norm. And again, if there was only one wage coming into the house, you know, that wage had to be, you know, um, treated very carefully and everything had to be accounted for, every penny had to be counted. And in a lot of cases, there was a lot of hand-me-downs. So the the eldest uh, child would hand down their clothes to the next, you know, the next child and the next child and the next child. And in some cases, probably another way to save money. I know in my own mother's case, she done a lot of knitting because at the time, uh, clothes were particularly dear. So it was probably cheaper for, you know, mums to knit their kids jumpers um, and save a few pennies that way. Now, Jonathan's mother used to knit his jumpers. But one thing I noticed about Jonathan's jumpers was that he never seemed to grow out of them. You know, his jumpers were more like uh, rainbow, like, you know, from the, the neck to the waistband. They were all different colours. And, you know, on closer inspection, it seemed that Jonathan's jumpers were growing like him. So it looked that like his mother was, Jonathan would reach a point where the, he was getting too big of his jumper and his mother would get the, she would get the, the knitting needles out and she would add another row onto his jumper so that he would get another little bit of use out of it. So again, like the trunks of a tree, you know, it was probably possible to count the colours, uh, the row of colours in the jumper and tell how old the jumper was or maybe yeah, actually how old the child was that was wearing it. And, you know, um, there's an important business lesson in that. Now, you're probably wondering, what is it? And that is, for me, I think, um, you know, it's staying within your your business size. You know, for a lot of people, we do get, you know, online, it's very easy to get caught up on watching what the competition is doing. You know, you're watching somebody who's maybe a blogger and, you know, they're all over Instagram, they're all over Twitter, Facebook, and all these different platforms. And it's easy for us to think, well, if I'm, I'm going to be as successful as that person, I need to be on those platforms and I need to start today. I can't, you know, I need to get, I need to get out there. I need to build an audience and all those different things. And in some cases, it's almost like, imagine if somebody who'd never um, got off the couch in a couple of years, you know, and they've seen somebody on TV with a, a beach body or whatever it is, and they decided, well, that's it. I'm going to hit the gym tomorrow. You know, and they went into the gym, they turned the, the treadmill up full blast, they jumped onto it for maybe for two or three minutes and fell off exhausted. And, you know, because they couldn't keep up, the body wasn't used to it. And, you know, if you could imagine them doing that for a couple of days, there's eventually going to be a point where they just say, well, you know, it's not worth it, I can't keep up. And, you know, they're eventually not going to, they're going to give up and they're never going to get any closer to that beach body. And so it is like with a lot of business people, they're looking at other people, uh, you know, on social media, they're looking at all the content they're creating and, you know, they're thinking, well, I need to do the exact same as them too. Rather than saying to themselves, you know, am I big enough in my business at the moment for me to take on a little bit more? You know, like Jonathan's mother never added another arm onto his jumper because it wasn't needed. And she never added maybe two or three years of growth into that jumper because again, he, it was needed he was going to be swimming in it she just added in what was enough for another year and then you know when the jump out got too small from she maybe let it out or she added another row in or whatever was needed to get more use out of that jumper you know when it's easy again when you're looking at everybody else it's easy on the outside to think that all those people are successful that all those people are creating their content you know you may have that blogger who is all over all those social media platforms and maybe they're sacrificing their blog before because of it. You know, maybe they haven't got as much time because they think they need to be out in all those different places. You know, you, you don't know what's going on in the background. Maybe they have a, vis- a virtual assistant taking care of all that content. Maybe they have a ghostwriter or whatever. Maybe they have a team of people doing all that stuff for them. And, you know, it, they probably learned over time that once they reach a certain point, well, I can't be on all the platforms everywhere. So I'll hire somebody to be my social media person. But you might know that looking in from the outside. And 
and bec before and then you going ahead maybe and trying to keep up with those people you know means that you're going to get motivated you're going to get disappointed you're not going to be able to keep up you probably say to yourself well I, you know i'm sacrificing free time with my family when i am all over these platforms or uh, whatever it is that i'm doing you know if you're somebody who maybe is only create maybe three pieces of content for a week for your blog because that's all you're able to do you know if you jumped out straight away and you says right well i need to do seven days a week and you know you haven't got the time you haven't you haven't got your you know whatever is needed to do that you know you're never going to stay at uh, that for long so you would you be better maybe just if you are only creating three pieces of content a week maybe just saying to yourself right okay like jonathan's jumper i'm just going to add another layer onto it i'm going to try and do four pieces of content a week and then once you start writing that you know those four pieces of content every week eventually you're going to reach a point where you're going to say you know what this is very very easy i can do five if i want to and then adding in another blog post then or whatever it is or maybe if you are doing fiction writing or whatever or kind of non-fiction writing maybe your you know your typing speed may be a little bit slow at the moment you know try turn up a little bit more so see if you can get out more words per hour you know see if you can write maybe a few more extra pages a week or whatever it is rather than actually try to go all gung-ho and just you know eventually just burning out losing motivation and just dropping out of the game you know add a little bit more into your business and then you'll reach a point where you'll say well you know this is comfortable i can keep going at this or if i want to add another layer maybe i could maybe hire a virtual assistant to take care of that for me or a ghostwriter to do this for me or somebody to do my book covers or whatever it is and just add a little piece on at a time until you grow to that size where everything feels comfortable then and then just straighten yourself a little bit more you know it's it's very easy just you know because to compare yourself with everybody else online but again as i said you don't know what's going on in the background you don't know what all those people are doing you don't know how much time they're sacrificing maybe you know when you find out what they're doing you know you say to yourself i god i would don't want to be anybody anything like that because you know i've got time with my kids i, I can't sacrifice that to be all over those social media platforms you know rather than trying to be all over the social media platforms you know if you're only on twitter you know get settled in a twitter build an audience on twitter you know respond to your fans and create content there and then if you find well you know you've got a little bit more time or it's easy to do then move on to another social media platform and then like Jonathan's mother did you know add another layer into your build you grow into that and then move from there so I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode I hope it may you know it gave you something to think about um, now if you enjoyed this episode I'd really appreciate it if you maybe would just uh, click a couple of the social media buttons and share with anybody else that you know may like it now if you'd like to know more about me or if you'd like to know more about the right Com site you're very welcome to drop by over and we'd be glad to see you there now how you get there is if you go uh, to google and you just type in right Com, which is w-r-i-t-e-c-o-m-e dot com and you'll find me over there so as always thanks for sharing your time with me again today and take care and have a great day Bye bye